Here's a question. How do you bowl at the death? Bowled in. There are many who would question my authority on this subject after what happened to me in a NatWest final a couple of decades ago when I was bowling the last over with 10 required for victory. Neil Smith was the batsman and I tried to keep him guessing by bowling a slower ball. Unfortunately, he guessed too well. The key to bowling at the death is to be unpredictable so the batsman doesn't know what to expect. But the bowler's banker at the death is definitely the Yorker, the one right in at the batsman's toes because he can't get any leverage. The best exponent of that in the world is Latif Malinga and the reason is because he's got such a low slingy bowling action. You can see it coming from about 11 o'clock here which means even if he misses his length by about a couple of inches it's still a half volley which hasn't got much bounce and therefore much elevation elevation for the batsman to work with and get underneath. Whereas a bowler like Tim Bresnan, who bowls at the death for England, has a much higher action as you can see here, and therefore if he misses his Yorker length by a couple of inches and makes it a half volley, the batsman can still get underneath it because of a bit more bounce. We can see that here on Hawkeye. The trajectory of Bresnan in white coming down and when the ball bounces, even if it's very full, it still gives the batsman enough bounce to work with, whereas Malinga in blue, even if he doesn't get his Yorker quite perfect, it's still very low on the bat and the batsman has trouble getting it into the air. Malinga is an absolute master of the Yorker, regularly detonating stumps with these heat-seeking missiles. And by the way, did you know what the derivation of the word Yorker is? It's an 18th century term to put Yorkshire on somebody, which means to deceive them or swindle them. Bowling Yorkers requires a lot of energy, getting the ball as full as possible, as fast as possible. And bowlers like Malinga practice this by putting a pair of trainers on the crease at the far end and aiming at them constantly. It also helps to visualise the Yorker too and imagine it getting right up there underneath the batsman's toes. And how you can perfect it if you've got quite a high action is to maybe open your chest slightly in delivery, bowl a little bit more front on and try and sling the ball at the batsman with a slightly lower arm. That has more chance of getting to the desired place and also it might get a bit of reverse in-swing into the stumps as well. One day cricket evolves fast though, and there is a new school of thought that bowling in the death requires lots of variation of length so the batsman doesn't know what to expect. Look at Dale Steyn here the other night against the New Zealanders, defending seven off the last over, and you can see a real variation in his length, all bowled of course at high pace, but some short balls, some a little bit fuller, and all very wide of off stump to stop the batsman from hitting towards his preferred leg side. There are of course so many shots at a batsman's disposal these days that what a death bowler needs most of all is resilience because some days whatever you try goes horribly wrong. Oh, wow! Would you believe it? It's out of here! I'm going to be covering a hot cricketing topic every week, so please tweet me your questions and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the little button at the top right of the screen. Thanks.